on their beds right now are lying in under the rain in a forest uh, opening themselves to rain to snakes to mosquitoes it's an investment in our struggle and this time this is the last time we'll have to solve this problem because only cowards die a thousand times we are not cowards we've never been cowards this time we are either a free people or we'll live to die you have any other closing word pal? well as uh, the days go by the struggle is getting uh, more difficult and i hope and pray that we stay the course there are times that we have not been come we have not been able to come as often as we would like to to keep up with you but it is because of our commitment to the struggle i for one might not be able to come so regularly because of other things that i'm involved in i don't know how they will end but it is for the struggle it is for a good cause and whatever happens mr ambi will be able to come and tell you why i couldn't be on the show so long good night stay blessed and stay the course thank you The dignified people of Southern Cameroons, my dear compatriots, throughout human history, a time comes in the life of a nation held in bondage like ours, when its suffering peoples must stop and think of where they are coming from, reflect on why they are where they are, and figure out how to get to where they want to be. For us, the people of Southern Cameroons, a.k.a. Ambazonia, that time is now. I realize, like all freedom-driven Southern Cameroonians, that we come from a tortured history of hugely forced historical mistakes made by the colonial West and the United Nations. Were it not perforce and deliberate, how could a nation that the UN recognized rightfully deserved independence in 1960 be forced to have that independence by joining another independent nation? On profoundly reflecting and researching on why we are where we are and why we have conducted our nationalistic business in this lopsided way, through our history, I have come up with some surprising conclusions after a critical analysis that few of us will have the courage to admit, talk less of the humility to accept. Throughout our tortured history, except for one occasion, which was the famous walk out from the Eastern House in Inigu in Nigeria, to reconstitute in Boya, we have always been cowards on major national issues. Why? We have never had the collective courage to go all the way for what we want and what we deserve. We have been cowards because in this lack of courage, we like the easy thing. We like the convenient thing, we like the shortcuts, and we like the quick fix. We have always lacked the spine, the stomach, and the will of steel to say a collective no when it mattered most for the life of our nation. 
Historically, we have shied away from the difficult, tough, and nasty task of nation building. That is why, from 1960 onwards, we allowed others to take decisions on our behalf. So they push us where they want us, pin us on and make us serve their interests. In 1960 and 61, our leadership, despite all its good efforts, lacked the spine to stand up to the UN and say no to independence by joining. In 1961, at the Fumban Conference, they rushed to do the easy, quick fix thing, led our leaders to presume the goodwill of the French Cameroonian leaders in keeping a gentlemanly word, rather than pin them down to put every single thing in black and white in writing. From 1965, we lacked the stomach to stand up to Ahijo and say no as he dissolved our political parties to form a one-party state. In 1972, we again lacked the backbone to tell Ahijo and the French no as they dismantled the federal state and destroyed all our state institutions in southern Cameroons. This our historical lack of collective will and courage go all the, to go all the way for what we want and what we deserve has continually given way for others to choose what they think we should want. This has led us to this ugly and deadly place where we are and where our people are now being exterminated. But I would like to reassure you that this generation has mustered the courage and the will to get this job done. And it will get the job done. So, this generation is telling Bia, telling John Good and his long line of enablers, telling the UN, telling the French, and all who are now supporting this fraud on Southern Cameroons, no, 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 and never again. It's game over. We are standing up to you, and this nonsense has to stop. And the best time to stop anything is always now. My dear compatriots, here we are in 2019, 58 years after this massive fraud was done on us as a nation. And Bia throws another dry broken bone called dialogue. And some of our naive people are falling over each other in a rush to go for it. They lack the courage to say no. The calculated aim of this move by Bia is to create confusion amongst us, divide us, buy himself time to let steam out of international pressure while his soldiers are stepping up the genocide on our people. There is absolutely nothing this man can offer us Southern Cameroonians. He is the reason we are where we are. We have no reason to be listening to this man and his followers. Let's not forget that he hates us. I know with first hand he does. He is our supreme killer and nothing more. The river of blood of the thousands of our compatriots he has taken, which includes babies, has swept away any trace of legitimacy he could ever have held over us as a people. Take note. My dear people, Bia does not want 
to solve any problem because if he did, the dialogue meeting he has called will not be taking place in Cameroon in the first place. Talk less of Yaoundé, his colonial capital. If you wanted to find solutions to these huge problems, would he wait for three years until his soldiers kill more than 6,000 of us before he reacts? And if his dialogue was about us as they claim, what has he invited his whole nation of French Cameroon to come and do there? How can English Cameroon have huge problems and 92% of those he invites to look for solutions are French Cameroonians? What language will they use in the deliberations? If this was about us, I want to reassure you, he would be talking to us, Southern Cameroonians, and not to French Cameroonians. In fact, he would be talking to us in Boya. To begin with, these his invitees never saw anything wrong with the violence he unleashed, that he unleashed by setting our soldiers on our people and they burned down several hundred villages, killing women and children, and driving 80 to 100,000 into Nigeria as refugees. What therefore will be their contribution in this process? For your information, knowing how this system works, he has invited all of them to complete the process of keeping us in chains. They are all coming there to prove that we count for nothing. He has brought them there to guide us on how to wear our newest slave chains and shackles and nothing more. They are there to confirm their minister's word in 2016 that indeed we are two cubes of sugar that they've been trying to dissolve for 58 years. This is just another trick in the old book of oppression. It simply won't work. Not this time. Not ever again. These primitive French Cameroonian administrators most truly believe we are the last fools of the earth. We have had problems with these people for over 50 years. Which have ended up in a three-year war. Bia calls a meeting within two weeks. No preparations. To sit for four days. No possibility to discuss anything. And solve the problems of 58 years. And my people, they want us to believe them that they have done it to solve anything for us? What a shame. So they actually believe we can trust them all over again with our nation in 2019. What did they do with the trust our forefathers gave them from 1961? They were entrusted with the whole nation, its people, its lands stretching from the Atlantic Ocean through the tropical forest to the savannas in the north. And what did they do with these lands and the people for 60 years? All they did was plunder the land, corrupt its people, imprison them, torture them, maim them, humiliate them, dehumanize them, enslave them, declare war on them, and finally are now practicing a genocide on them in an effort to exterminate them. With thousands already slain. We should be mentally deranged as a nation to think of having anything to do with people who treat us like the scum of the earth. 
in southern Cameroon itself, we have all witnessed the drama in this meaningless political circus run by the colonial divas and governors from La Republic as they list up supporters and enablers of the evil system for the charade. Groups of failed leaders, which includes traditional rulers, business magnates, con men, fraudulent civil servants, questionable women's groups, and politicians from both the ruling and opposition parties are scurrying around like hungry rabbits, dreaming of reviving their political fortunes by trying to take us, the nation of Southern Cameroons, Ambazonia, one slavery, imprisonment, and death. This generation says, no, never again. Take note that these people are not going there on behalf of Southern Cameroons. They do not even represent you, the people. And this includes our supposed members of parliament, senators, mayors, and whoever who choose to look away or whisper in their armpits while the evil regime exterminated their own people. They do not even know why you, their people, are fighting to the death. So whatever they will say there and do there will have no bearing on the people and on the land of Amazonia. If anything, their words and actions there will inflame the people and worsen the violence. They are supporting this beer fraud with the hope that he uses this assembly of charlatans to kill our revolution so that they can return to their old game of using the people for personal benefit. Never again. The people of Ambazonia have rebelled against you and their killers. My dear compatriots, we need to keep reminding Bia and the world that we are dealing here with the case of a stolen state. We brought the state of Southern Cameroons into a union with La Republic in 1961. The world must know that we are today fighting to take back our stolen nation and we will stop at nothing until we get it back. Our generation has decided this mission must be accomplished. We will do it in our lifetime. We will not leave it to the unborn child. We will seize our nation back from them come what may. Remember, it is our right to do so. Remember, it is our collective responsibility to do so. Remember, it is a do or die. And remember, we, we, and that includes me, are ready to die doing it. To those of our brothers and sisters from Southern Cameroons who have chosen to seek their fortune by looking at the easy outlet with the oppressor, we have a very strong warning for you all. Beware of the potent power of our blood spilled by these people. Beware. And do not dare stand on the way of the people's revolution. Do not take their blood on your feet to go and negotiate for whatever those people have called you for. As you all join our oppressors, Remember that you and all the people with whom you will be sitting there did not start the Ambazonian Revolution. 
So all of you, including Bia, lack the power to use this overblown distraction to end it. The brave Amazonian soldiers who have held the revolution and brought the government to its knees are not there. So, this destruction will come and go. Like everything else, Paul Bia blows up and the struggle will continue at high gear and in earnest. My dear compatriots, I would like to respond to one of Bia's provocative statements that the future of English Cameroons is with La Republique. I would love to state categorically and without reserve that the past of English Cameroon was with La Republique for 57 years and has now ended as he is trying to drown us in our own blood with a brutal genocide. He should take this from me and from the dignified people of Amazonia that the future of Southern Cameroons is with herself as a free, independent, and democratic nation called Amazonia lying west of the Gulf of Guinea. I can see the day when he or anyone else from his country, the Republic of Cameroon, will get their visa clearances done at the Mongo Bridge or at the Tiku Airport by the Federal Immigration Office of Ambazonia, were they ever to be in good humor to visit their neighbors to the West. The only thing I ask of him and his people of La Republic, who are killing us, is to immediately stop these senseless killings so that it does not make it too difficult for us in future to live peacefully as neighbors. After all, all nations are free to choose their friends, but no nation chooses its neighbors. All nations can change their friends, but no nation can change its neighbors. Ambazonia will never be an exception to that role among the family of nations. My dear comrades, at the SCNC convention last June, I made a call to you all about the absolute need for us to organize and defend our revolution. Many Ambazonians with revolutionary blood, alongside those with revolutionary mindsets, have been responding to this important call. They have been at work, both in the homeland and in the diaspora, putting together what it takes for a people's revolution to achieve its desired goal. These are small but efficient groups of revolutionary-minded people who can work to liberate their homeland without the need to be known. I would like to reassure you that this revolutionary group expects no reward from whoever, apart from the success of our revolution. They are ready to give what it takes for us to be free. They are a small group of men and women who have understood that revolutions are done more from the back rooms in the than in the market square of the internet. You all shall know them by their works rather than by their words. 
the first move this tough revolutionary team has done has been to engage top level U.S. diplomats and lobbyists alongside other international partners at a very high price tag. These high, these people of high repute have agreed to work for Ambazonia and take up our case to the highest possible levels of international recognition. We thank them, we bless them. My address today is principally to reassure you, the Southern Cameroonian people, that our struggle is on course. Our revolution is now very well grounded in the homeland and it is only a matter of time before we reach our goal. We are not just doing well, I can assure you, we are doing very well indeed. Freedom is near, but remember freedom is never free. Freedom is here for us to fight and take, because in this highly dangerous freedom business, nobody does it for you. You either do it for yourself or you perish. We are blessed that this generation has chosen to do it for Ambazonia. I salute our freedom fighters, aka the Amber boys and girls. You are the defenders of our people. You are the defenders of our land. You are the defenders of our freedom. And you are the reason we are still standing today as a nation. Despite the fact that a few bad grains have amongst you tried to bring disrepute to your earnest and valiant work. We have put everything in check to make sure that they weed out those bad elements. Remember, Ambazonia shall live and shall owe her life to you and to the thousands of our brave fallen heroes. Thank you all very much. God shortened the struggle of Ambazonia. God will continue to bless Ambazonia. Thank you all. Fellow Southern Cameroonians, Ambazonians, good evening. The interim government of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia, under the able leadership of our president, Seseko Julius Ayuktabe, is pleased to announce this day, 26th of October, 2019, that Ambassador Herman J. Cohen has accepted our commission to be the voice of Southern Cameroonians and Ambazonians in the community of nations. Ambassador Cohen is a distinguished American diplomat, a former United States Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, advisor to United States Presidents, and a decades-old veteran of the Foreign Affairs Service. He will add inestimable value to Ambazonians' existential and sovereign statehood struggles. He brings on board a wealth of experience and savvy in matters governmental, diplomatic, and strategic, as well as informed counseling on world issues. We are delighted to have him with us and avail ourselves of this auspicious occasion 
to welcome him most heartily as we violently continue to fight for freedom from colonial depravity and sanguinary repression. Therefore, now, the international community, or La Republique du Cameroon and her supporters, can no longer say that they don't know who to talk to. Ambassador Cohen is the answer. Only the U.S. can be a credible mediator, and therefore, the people of Southern Cameroons, Amazonia, submit to America as mediator and venue for reasons of mediation, security, and enforcement of resolutions. All prisoners of war must be freed and all military taken out of our territory. La Republique du Cameroon must first recognize Southern Cameroons as a separate political entity equal in status. Fellow Southern Cameroonians, we want to make the international community understand that we are ready to dialogue or negotiate with La Republique du Cameroon only if all these conditions are met. Thank you, and God bless you.